Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk with me, Sifiso Matlang. As usual, I have a prominent guest sitting on this hot seat tonight. South Africa has been abuzz with political activity. Many organizations calling for President Zuma to step down. But the ANC stands firm behind their leader. It's going to be interesting leading up to their elective conference. 2019 is ahead of us. The economy, some say, is in dire frame, but some say the first black leader runs the South African economy once since democracy. It is a buzz on the streets. It is a buzz in our parliament. Will the ANC survive this tenor? I'm seated next to the DSG of the ruling party, Ms. Jessie Duarte. Ms. Duarte, I welcome you to the thank show. You. And you said you'd never come again, but thank you for being here. <laughs> it's my pleasure. You know, we, we do things uh, that have to be done, and, and this is important. And you gave me headlines on my first show, so... Uh, <laughs> Are you happy? Uh, welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. There is okay. a buzz in this mm, country. Yes. Um, mm. There has been a reshuffle. Mm -hmm. Many call it the midnight reshuffle of President Jacob Zuma. Mm. Uh, Malusi Gigaba is our... Minister of Finance, yes. Mr. Pravin Gordon, is out. Mm -hmm. What do you think contributed to President Zuma's decision for this reshuffle? I think the president's uh, primary objective is to ensure that we're able to transform the economy of South Africa. And uh, in doing so, he needs people now, at this point in time, who will see both uh, management of fiscal discipline ensuring that our debt ratio does not climb beyond uh, where it should be, uh, managing the state-owned enterprise as well, on the one hand, uh, and ensuring that our uh, direct foreign in investing companies, DBSA, IDC, PIC, and so on, begin to shift their focus away from traditional investment towards looking at black-owned companies that may not have a white partner in the background or in the front ground, in the fore, foreground. And I think that his, his, his concerns were, were raised with us since last year, that he didn't feel that he was getting that kind of support uh, from uh, the previous minister, and he needed to move forward uh, fairly rapidly. So he has moved forward. Um, and if one, uh, we met uh, the new Minister of Finance on, on Monday, and I must say that we were incredibly impressed with how quick he began to understand the, the, the key imperatives of what he needed to do. That the Minister of Finance is an executor of policy. He's not a generator of new policies. He executes the policies of the, of the governing party and does so responsibly. But he also does not prevent uh, progress from, from continuing and finds, will find mechanisms that are not populist to assist in, in doing that. We can't continue along a trajectory of talking about small to medium enterprises and we do nothing. And there's no movement except well-written policy documents that are not being funded uh, in any way or a, a redirection of resources to enable that to happen and a conversation uh, which is sensible and not aggressive amongst ministers to say, look, X priority I may have had is not as important as transforming this economy. So I'm going to let this program lay back for a while. Uh, and I think that uh, we, we're at that point now where I, uh, I personally was extremely impressed with the way he managed his input at the NWC, for instance, very clearly having thought in a short space of time, uh, what needs to be done? Ms. Dwight, I want to put it on record sure. that uh, I have invited Mr. Pravin Gordon yes. to come and sit with me <clears throat> and give me the straight talk. Mm -hmm. I invite uh, all political leaders. Sure. I've invited the DA and mm. the EFF. But I mm. want South Africa to know mm. that um, if they don't come, I'll still have to tell my story. Of course. And the, the show has got to go on. Yes. Um, are you of the mind that Mr. Gordon was wrong to lead the South African economy. Was he the wrong man for the job? I wouldn't say that because I, you know, we all know uh, Comrade Pravin for decades. 
so this is not this is an activist uh, Pravin Gordon is an activist um, he's a he's a he's a very um, single-minded in purpose person once he sets his mind to something that's what he, he will do he had the trust of the president for decades they've known each other since 1974 I'm so told yes. so what might have happened between these two gentlemen is something they must explain to each other perhaps privately and then later on to the rest of us but very clearly um, a situation emerged where the trust level between them was eroded over one or other matter. We have not been given the specifics of it, except to, uh, we were told last year already that, you know, that uh, the, uh, the, the relationship between the president and the finance minister is not a good one. <clears throat> now, in, a, in, a, in an emerging democracy or de developing country like our own, there are critical relationships that cannot fail. One is the relationship between the Minister of Finance and the President, the Minister of Intelligence and the President, Police uh, and, and the Defence Force. It, it works like that. It works like that everywhere in the world. The Minister of Economic Development, the Minister of Trade and Industry. Those are relationships that the country needs right now that are not the servicing directly of the people ministries because they actually find and, and support the service industries uh, or, or service ministries. Hopefully, um, uh, Mr. Gordon, Comrade Pravin will find something else to contribute uh, within our society. He's a, he's a good person, but he couldn't work with the, with the president, and that's not mm. a, a good thing. I want to draw my attention to the, the intelligence report. Yes. Uh, Mr. Pravin Gordon held... Uh, a press conference on his last day in office mm. and uh, showed the media and the world the intelligence report, mm. uh, which he said was a farce and a fake. Uh, some people said uh, that intelligence report could have, been written, could have been written by a child. Can you divulge in the contents of that intelligence report? The ANC leadership had never seen any intelligence report. On the night that we met with the South African Communist Party, the president alluded to the fact that he had received intelligence, which uh, disturbed him greatly, uh, about uh, a program which was to be held in the UK and in London. Uh, he did mention that amongst other uh, difficulties that he had was that it would appear that there would be a conversation with uh, financiers as well as uh, other other institutions to talk South Africa down and he was disturbed about that um, now we have not seen this report and we have institutions in this country how did mr. Gordon get the report that's a very good question uh, if the report because I had, I was there mm. and I saw him raise the yes. report for the cameras to see yeah. so I don't know how he got the report uh, he has it and apparently the South African Communist Party also have the report we do not have this report even now and apparently the report was mailed uh, uh, to some people and they said they couldn't open it i also don't understand that i personally did not was not favored with a copy of this this thing so uh, that that may be uh, as well uh, but what i wanted to say the institutions in this country we have a a joint committee in parliament on intelligence we also have an inspector general of intelligence in south africa their task is to examine objectively the veracity or otherwise of an intelligence report that people are disputing. What is difficult now is that the, this particular report is now the subject of a populist campaign uh, which is aimed at denouncing the president of the republic. The president of, the, of South Africa has every right to make changes to his cabinet. But as we've pointed out to him now, after consulting with the ANC, uh, we have a Pulukwani resolution. And the president accepted that very graciously. But he also explained that he didn't feel comfortable with sharing uh, information with us because he wasn't sure where the leaks were coming from. 
uh, whether the leaks were from the South African Communist Party or from the ANC uh, top six officials. It's only later on that he realized that he had done something he'd never done before, was to share fairly sensitive information in the manner that he did in a rather large meeting of two sets of leaders. Um, and, and, and he didn't feel comfortable on the night that he talked about the rest of the cabinet changes. Um, you know that we did know that he was going to reshuffle mm. uh, 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 Mr. Gordon in November last year. Uh, it's surprising why people act as if they were not aware. Oh, they were. Many of your leaders in the top six were acting <laughs> uh, very surprised. Well, and I quote uh, uh, Deputy President Cyril sure. Ramaphosa yes. uh, said, uh, what the president mm. has done is unacceptable. Mm. Those were his words. I, Why did I, he pretend he did not know when well, there had been consultation? I think that what he was doing was reacting when it happened. That, you know, Ms. This Duarte, reaction. how do your leaders expect mm. South Africa to trust mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. if they don't tell mm. the truth? Well, we have. I mean, um, uh, I must say for for Montage, that right from the very beginning, he said, we know about, we knew about Praveen, we didn't know about the rest. Um, uh, the deputy president in our meeting did say to the president that he didn't agree with him on the reshuffle of uh, Praveen Gordon. The president then said, in our discussion, and I mean, I'm skipping a lot of dots yes. here, said in our discussion, well, if, if, you, if you people don't agree with me, you can say so. Yeah. So there had been consultation. And they gave, he gave license, yeah. you see. No, there was. There was consultation on Gordon several times and But Ms. George, you know one of your leaders actually yeah. said, and mm. we've got this on footage, sure. he said this list looks like it mm. has been compiled elsewhere. On, this, on the list of cabinet ministers other than Praveen Gordon, there was no consultation. Let me put that to you. What the president did do was he informed us of his decision. Um, there were one or two that he had not yet decided on. I think if my memory serves correct, at the time, he had not yet made a decision about home affairs. He came back later. Um, but this is what he said to us. He said, these names come from his own notebook. And what he did was he gave it to his staff to type it out so that he could read it to us. And he did not consult us because he did not feel comfortable, that's what he said, yeah. with sharing information given the fact that he thought things were leaking out. It's afterwards when we met for one and a half days and nights, I must say it was long meetings, when the president also conceded that there was the Polokwani resolution. And it is President Zuma who began this very principled way of dealing with the leadership of the ANC throughout his two terms as the president of the ANC. He's always consulted the leadership about changes that he was going to make. And people got used to that. Mm. So there was shock. You so know. those leaders who said there had not been consultation mm. were actually not telling the truth. Let me, let me rephrase so that we understand each other. On this list that the president read to us on last Thursday, on the issue of Praveen Gordon, there was consultation. There was consultation since November last year. In January again, the president indicated that he, he is uh, at a point where he wants to make a change. The issue came up about who the president wanted to replace the finance minister with. There was a long discussion about why that wouldn't work. The president accepted that, and he made a different determination. That is consultation. Mm. That means that you, you were influenced by the views and thoughts of other people. On the other list of people, the second list, let's leave Gordon out of yes. this. The president presented a list which he, did, he presented and said, I am making these changes. There was no discussion on it. There was no room open to discuss it based on the fact that the president said he did not feel comfortable. And indeed, there are other ministers who have been reshuffled. It wasn't just Mr. Pravin Gordon. You know, I, but I, I think perhaps because mm, South Africa has an obsession yes. with Mr. Pravin Gordon that they're yeah. failing to, to, to look to at other areas where the yes. president has uh, changed. But, but look, over the years, uh, 
the president um, <laughs> reshuffled Tokyo Sekhwale. I can't remember M M Mr. Sekhwale saying a word afterwards. I don't remember him hosting a, a press conference or anything and joining another or, group outside of, of finance right. or treasury. Uh, I mean, I'm just using him as, as one example. Um, I can think of many others. Dipur Peters, for instance. I have a great respect for that woman. Wrote a letter to the ANC, thanked the ANC for the opportunity she was given out of many hundreds of thousands of people in the country to be a minister um, and, and is moving on graciously, you know. Uh, and, and I must just say this hype about ministers who are resigning. Fact of the matter is that financially, if, the minister, if a person resigns now, they get their pension rate at the rate they were earning as a minister. If they continue and they re leave later on, they get their pension rate at, at, at that as an ordinary MP. So it makes very good sense for people financially to take the package to resign now. Right now. Yes. For, some of them will do yeah, so, yeah. others won't. That's a valid point. But, you know, there's a, a, a multiplicity of voices sure. that are coming from the top six and sure. some members of the NEC. Uh, Mr. Gwede Mantashe at your press conference reporting mm. about the NWC meeting mm. said we will no longer speak publicly, we'll no longer spat or have public fights. Mm. You'll hear of one voice yes. from the ANC. It's true. Are there repercussions for a minister or a member of the top, top six who will speak mm. outside of the ANC agreement? Um, you know, we're not drones, so we are allowed to say things that we need to mm. say. But I mean, things yeah. that, uh, that contest each other yes. or things that harm or afflict the yeah. organization. I think if you're leading an organization and you are in, in a particular collective, then the collective must speak with one voice. It is very unusual in a collective for people to have dissonant voices. And we spent one and a half days discussing that and coming to the conclusion that mistakes were made on, on all sides. On the, on the one side, uh, an understanding that the president had given permission for people to go and speak their minds. On the other side, well, even if the president did give you permission, you should have thought about what the repercussions would be of saying the kinds of things that you did say. So uh, what happens if a member speaks well, uh, from the top six and let's says hope, something you didn't agree on? Let's hope that in future um, we won't do that. Let's hope that we've learned from this. It's been a very bitter lesson and it, it has affected our membership quite deeply. Uh, it's hurt people. Uh, it has created a, 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 a a divisive element that says there are three of them on one side and three of them on the other side. When in fact the truth of the matter is we, we in fact get on quite well when we work together. Uh, this was quite an unusual instance. And if you look back on the top six of the ANC, we've never had a situation like this. Well, Mr. Provin Gordon is still an NEC member. Yes, he is. Um, he, he still speaks at the Ahmed Katrada Memorial mm. Services. Uh, he has been speaking throughout this week. Yes. Um, he has taken many hits at mm. uh, Ms. Batabile Lamini. Yeah. He continues to speak about mm. uh, the finance mm. ministry mm. as if uh, Mr. Gigaba mm. is incapable mm. of uh, becoming a good mm. uh, finance minister. He mm. still makes slurs about President Zuma. Mm. What do you do with a leader who does that? We want to raise these issues fairly objectively. Um, to talk about his, his, his posture at the moment. Um, it isn't clear... And talk about him joining Safe South Africa, and because it isn't those, clear. Are, those yeah. look like his yes. uh, partners at the moment. Well, it at the press conference, he was joined by Zuelin Zimavavi, mm. was joined by um, mm. Mr. Sipo mm. Pijana, mm. who I remember in my last conversation with you, you mm. stated that you were not even sure if he is a member of, of the, the ANC. ANC. And I'm still not sure. <laughs> no, look, I think that one, we will have to raise these issues fairly, um, fairly robustly with, with uh, uh, Pravin Gordon. When we need to criticize a, a, a comrade, we must do it correctly and objectively. And I don't know if it is being objective to publicly 
state the kind of things that have been stated about uh, about Batabile Dlamini. The most important thing for us to remember today is that the pensions have been paid out, despite this overwhelming crisis that was created in the media mm. that it wouldn't. There are problems. We all we we're very clear about that. There are problems with um, CP, CP, CPS. CPS. Uh, it is it is clearly not the kind of institution uh, that should be running our our pension systems. That's why they've been given only a year. The courts are asking for a three month report. So it's not like there aren't problems. But let me just say very very uh, unequivocally that don't think it is right for a person who is no longer a member of cabinet to talk about the things that happened in cabinet whilst he or she was a member of cabinet. It's not correct. I, I sat close to you at the funeral of yes. Mr. Ahmed Katrada, mm -hmm. and we both got to see and hear yes. uh, the slurs and the hits yes. that went on as speaker after speaker mm. uh, took to the platforms. Mm. What does the top six feel about what happened at the funeral of Ahmed Katrada? I think that I can't say generally how everybody feels, but let me speak for myself. Um, I was deeply, deeply disturbed. Um, Ahmed Kathrada has always been a, a figure of unity in the ANC, a driver of a non-racial compact, uh, putting the national question up front fearlessly, dealing with issues of integrity, of morality, of ethics, very, very... Uh, graciously and correctly, I think his memory was damaged at that at that uh, at that funeral. Well, that's a very strong Unequ statement. Unequivocally, in my view, yes. it was damaged because I doubt that um, Comrade Kathy would ever have read out that letter in the manner that it was read out. I think it was stage managed. It was meant to have an impact and an effect on the country and on the audience that had been gathered at that particular funeral. I felt hurt as a person because there Kathy was in a coffin right in front of us. We were still mourning him and his funeral was used to attack an organization that he dearly loved. Mm. And even in his criticism of our president, Kathy has always been at the same time constructive in the manner that he did it. Um, I, I believe in my heart, and I, I say this really sincerely, he would not have read that letter publicly. And I'm doubting whether Cathy asked anyone to read Well, I've that been letter. made aware of two things. Yes. That uh, after the letter was written, mm. the president did speak to the stalwarts yes. and uh, did meet Mr. Kathrada mm. uh, yes. due to the contents of the letter. Yes. And number two, I'm an analyst, so mm. I, I have to apply some thought sure, to things. Of course. Um, I don't know if Mr. Katrada, who's just come out of hospital, mm. could write a five-page letter mm. to, to President Jacob Zuma. Mm. Uh, the chairman of the Katrada Foundation mm. is um, uh, Minister, or then Minister, Derek Hanekorn. Mm. Uh, do you think that Mr. Ahmed Katrada wrote that letter, or do you think this letter mm. and his memorial service mm. was choreographed to be an attack on President Jacob Zuma? Well, the letter is about a year old, let yes. me say that to you. So, uh, uh, it, and it, he wasn't it, well when he wrote it, I'm well, aware of that. It's possible that he could have written that letter. This was a very astute person. Um, in my humble view, Comrade Cathy was very brilliant, but genuine. Um, so he did criticize the president. I, I have to say that to you. He was not afraid to do so, but he had always the organization in his heart. Now, if Comrade Cathy wanted this letter to be public, in my, in my view, he would have made it public during a period when he was able to do so, between, in the 12 months uh, between the time he wrote the letter and the time of his passing away. I, the thing that I am doubting is whether he asked anyone to read that letter.